Let's discuss what decentralized finance is. What is this new hype term DeFi? What does it mean? How does it work? And uh, well, what does it mean for you? And uh, this is something I want to discuss here. Um, if we ask ourselves, right, and I think it's a very, very broad question, what are different types of use cases on a blockchain? Obviously, one use case is that of storage of information with money. So you're storing financial information. Bitcoin is the prime example for this. But then you go from there and you're like, okay, so you have Ethereum, and Ethereum is this Turing complete smart contract language um, or platform. What can you actually build on this? And this is a very relevant question because there's very few people who actually come up with answers where they say, you know what, this is the killer use case for Ethereum. Um, I recently seen a video from Andreas Antonopoulos where he talks about how it, uh, Ethereum could actually be the killer use case for governance. And I could see this. Um, I do believe, though, that if Ethereum would focus way more on one use case, that Ethereum would be way more, well, relevant. Instead of trying everything, go for one. And uh, I haven't seen any company or blockchain do this. And in this case, I'm talking about decentralized finance. I really would believe that the next chain or, or any company or anyone that really focuses on that use case could have some very, very strong benefits. Because many times, if you try to be, well, Jack of all, king of none um, can be quite dangerous. So you're trying to be the king of one thing can be very, very, very powerful. So what is this use case and why could it have such so much potential? If you think about blockchain, blockchain always struggles as soon as some physical stuff comes into place because you have this connection mismatch between the physical and the digital world and you don't have um, any kind of viewers or watchers who can be super trusted and can be super neutral that they bring the information onto the blockchain. Um, in the blockchain world, a lot of systems have been tried to set up called oracles that are supposed to somehow bypass that. But there's still a major problem. Um, and that is, whenever you have physical, it's not as easy. So as long as you stay in the digital world, well, blockchain seems to have been working better. And obviously, hopefully in 10, 20, 30 years, we're going to solve this connection physical to virtual world or, or digital world. But so far, it, we've been really struggling. And so here we come to actually and say, you know what? Money is not only a form of payment. A financial system has so many other features to it. And these are features that over the past 2,000 years have been done but traditionally by banks. Uh, we're talking about obviously issuing money. And this is where cryptocurrencies come in, right? But there's the ways how cryptocurrencies get issued. Proof of work, proof of stake, the way they get into the system. Um, how are they issued? Are they pre-mined? Are they being mined? Are they being staked that you get them? This is obviously a very relevant question. This service is super relevant. Then obviously we have the entire lending system. Um, massive, massive, massive out there. Um, you need lending, right? You need people who need to borrow money and you need people who like to lend money and get a return. Um, you have things like exchange features. Um, in this case, uh, you had the, the exchanges for a super long time. And now over time in blockchain, you can have decentralized exchanges. Very, very interesting. Then obviously you have that entire concept of so-called stable coins. Um, you can have stable coins that are centralized, and you can have stable coins that are decentralized. And last but not least, you can have a system that um, basically tokenizes assets and allows you to, to, collect, to connect a bridge somehow between another asset and a blockchain and have something in between with all the advantages of interoperability, but still with the upsides of the underlying asset. And so this is now where this concept of decentralized finance comes in. Instead of having all these things done by banks, so instead of them lending, instead of them creating money, if, in, instead of them offering investment services, in them, instead of them offering exchange services, instead of them offering transfers, remittance, and so on. Well, over the past 20 years, fintech companies came in and tried to take this over. Uh, PayPal, um, TransferWise, um, uh, any, any kind of loyalty program, any kind of game creator, um, any kind of lending system, peer-to-peer -peer lending, lending club, and so on. Suddenly, they came all in. You had uh, Robin Hood, for example, in, uh, in the US as an investment service. But so basically, what's happening there is you put away the people and you bring software into the game. Now, you still have to trust the company. You still have to trust the, the software. And now, with blockchain, what we could do, we could replace this software with decentralized, trustless software. In this case, smart contracts on a blockchain. And this is what decentralized finance is, or DeFi. And if I have to make a bet, then I really believe that going forward, really a big hype cycle and a lot of great companies will come out of this hype cycle 
because there's not really much hurdles. Regulatory, it looks really, really good. So if we look at if if, if we look at a lot of these systems, um, what what makes great companies, right? Then you want to have all kinds of different uh, features in there, right? You want to have a scalable solution. This stuff is scalable. It's digital, very easy to scale. You don't need physical locations. You have very low compliance. Um, there's always this concept of LASIK. Um, I made a video on this once. You want to have very low overhead, so you want to you want you want to make it have it easy to to create margins. And in, in decentralized finance, I mean, finance can be so profitable. And so now, if you make this trustless, powerful, um, then you don't need any assets because you can get all these assets from the customers. It's scalable. It's innovative, and you have very low compliance. So this, in my opinion, would be, if you ask me, the next big hype cycle in blockchain after the pure concept of storing in financial information. And going forward, I think this concept of decentralized finance, DeFi services, is going to be very, very, very important. Now, I also have to be honest, at the moment, I think it's a bit a question. What's going to be the company out there who's going to win this space? What's going to be the company out there? Um, or what's going to be the blockchain out there to be used? Uh, Ethereum tries to be everything. Um, let's see. None of the other blockchains really wants to be the specialist for DeFi. Um, I think you could also build it on top of Bitcoin, um, something that many, many people kind of underestimate. And um, that's going to be very interesting. Obviously, I'm also very interested in this space because uh, my new company called Cake that I'm building together with Yuzen, and uh, we have now a team of roughly 10 people. We're going to obviously go into this DeFi space. And so we're really, really interested in this space. And obviously, that's why I'm also very convinced. Um, but here in my personal channel, I don't want to pitch the company. I really want to focus on educating and uh, explaining to people what DeFi is and how this all works. Um, I hope this explains this to you, and I hope this gives you a good insight. If it does, let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up, please. Um, I, we also have a Facebook group, um, if you are on Facebook, <laughs> um, where we discuss this. Um, it's the DeFi group. Um, I'll link it up below. Also, we are having a meetup group here in Singapore. If you're based in Singapore, we have a meetup group. Um, where we meet and we discuss these things and we discuss use cases and how as an investor you can get involved. Because as an investor, it's very interesting because what you basically allows you to do is it allows you to draw cash flow out of the, the, these different use cases. And this is very, very powerful. Um, let me know also in the comments what you think about all DeFi. Um, do you agree with me that this could be a next huge wave and a lot of stuff coming out? Or do you disagree? I would be very interested in this. Um, yeah, with this, I'm going to have a brief check into the chat. If there's any questions on this, and otherwise, thanks so much for watching or listening if you listen to the podcast, and uh, I'll see you at the next video. Yours truly, Julian.